Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is control of nitrostamine impurities in human drugs. Let us see the requirement. Detection and prevention of unacceptable levels of probable human carcinogens, nitrosamine impurities in the human drugs. The probable human carcinogens, the nitrosamine impurities in human drugs like angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, ranitidine, nizatidine and metformin was recent findings of the FDA usage of drug products for higher dosages, longer periods with such cancer causing impurities can impact the human health significantly. The intent of the recommendations in the guide titled Control of Nitrosamine Impurities in Human Drugs, which is dated February 2021, is to evaluate and mitigate with an action plan over a variety of manufacturing conditions that could cause the increase of these impurities. The formation of nitrosamine is from the process steps of the APIs or drug products. Although the nitrosamine impurity was found only in certain drug products it is recommended to carry out a detailed risk assessment for all chemically synthesized APIs and the drug products that use such APIs. So, nitrosamines are formed during chemical reactions in the process. Even though these impurities were noticed in certain drug products and APIs, this made a necessity to evaluate all APIs and drug products produced with different synthetic routes for the presence of nitrosamine impurities through a detailed risk assessment. The other sources of nitrosamine impurity include use of vulnerable processes that may produce these impurities. Certain processes are vulnerable for the formation of these nitrosamine impurities. Let us see the general root causes for formation of these impurities. Presence of secondary, tertiary or quaternary amines and nitrate salts under acidic reaction conditions. Recent information gathered by the Food and Drug Administration suggests that the nitrosoamines are formed when compounds having a structure of a nitroso group bonded to an amine are used in the synthetic process in acidic conditions. Under these conditions, nitrate salts may form nitrous acid which can react with amines to form a nitrosoamine. Risk of formation is higher if nitrous acid is used for quenching the residual azide. The nitrosoamines are potent genotoxic agents in several animals and probable carcinogens for humans. So, the usage of secondary, tertiary or quaternary amines and nitrate salts have to be controlled. Nitrates used as reagents in one step of the process may carry over into subsequent steps. Nitrates when used in the process, these impurities may be carried over into subsequent steps. Even after purification steps, there is a possibility for the residual nitrate salts to react with amines and form nitrosamines. Amide solvents like NN dimethyl formamide can degrade into a dimethyl amine under certain reaction conditions. In this type of reactions, the degradant dimethyl amine 
will react with nitrous acid to form nitrous or dimethyl amine which is abbreviated as NDMA. The list is not exhaustive. It is the responsibility of the manufacturer to evaluate other reagents containing amine functional groups in a risk assessment report. Also, the list is not a total list of reagents, catalysts or solvents used in the process. It is the responsibility of the manufacturer to evaluate carefully with this focus on the formation of nitrosoamine impurities. Let us see more. Vendor sourced materials like ardoxylene, toluene and methylene dichloride may also contribute to the nitrosoamine impurities. It was found by the agency that the contamination of nitrosoamine in solvents like ardoxylene, toluene and methylene chloride is possible during the shipment between storage vessels. So there should be a justifiable control for this impurity over such solvents received through storage vessels. Materials like sodium azide, sodium nitrate, this is an impurity in the sodium azide also. Potassium nitrate may also contribute to the nitrosamine impurities. So acceptable levels of sodium nitrate in the materials where it can be an impurity has to be justified by the manufacturer. Starting materials that are manufactured in a facility where nitrosamines are cross-contaminated through other processes is another source of nitrosamine impurity. Required solvents, catalysts, reagents also contribute to nitrosamine impurities because of the presence of residual amine contamination. So unacceptable levels of amine impurities could be a potential risk for formation of nitrosamine impurities. APIs produced using the common required solvents from those synthetic processes that produce nitrosoamine impurities are at risk of contamination with nitrosoamine impurities. Required solvents have to be evaluated for the presence of any amines beyond the acceptable levels. There should be additional control in the specifications of required solvents. The analytical methods also should be validated to determine such low levels of amine impurities. Inadequate and unvalidated cleaning procedures between different materials may cause contamination by ingress of nitrosoamine impurities from one process to the other. Inadequate cleaning or unvalidated cleaning procedures are another source of ingress of amine impurities. Focus should be on screening for such impurities in the wash water or wash solvent whenever there is a change or cleaning carried out. Lack of process optimization is another source of nitrosamine impurities. So it is important to understand how the process can be optimized to get the best and to control the nitrosamine impurities ingress. The excipients that are used for the drug products may also contribute to the source of nitrosamine impurity. You may have to work very closely with the excipient manufacturer to control the levels of amines to the to acceptable levels. So all these con conditions uh, contribute to the formation of nitrosamine impurities. The recommendations are as recommended in ICHQ9, detailed risk assessment has to be carried out 
on all process steps to identify and assess all the possible causes for the presence of potential levels of nitrosoamine impurities. Useful tools FMEA, FMECA, HACCP, HAZOP, PHA, etc. of ICHQ9, the Quality Risk Management Guide, is effective for evaluation of risk. It is a very systematic approach for getting the best results. But it is very important that no step, whether it is a minor or a major step, be ignored to establish the risk. The intent of these tools should be understood fully. Accordingly, the manufacturer should take appropriate measures to prevent unacceptable levels of nitrosoamine impurities in their products. So, the correct identification and assessment of the risk would lead to appropriate measures to control and mitigate the risk. The evaluation should focus on factors such as maximum daily dosage, duration of treatment, therapeutic indication and number of patients treated. So the risk assessment should include the aspects like maximum dosage, duration of treatment, the therapeutic indications and the number of patients treated. Let us see the acceptable intake limits. The table describes the type of nitrosamine and the acceptable intake limits in nanogram per day. NDMA, which is N-nitrosodimethylamine, should be not more than 96 nanograms per day. NDEA, which is N-nitrosodiethylamine, the limit is not more than 26.5 nanograms a day. NMBA, n nitroso n methyl 4 amino butyric acid, the limit is 96 nanograms per day. NMPA, n nitroso methyl phenylamine, the limit is not more than 26.5. NIPEA, N nitroso isopropyl ethylamine is also have the same value of 26.5 nanograms a day. NDIPA, N nitroso diisopropyl amine also has the same value of not more than 26.5 nanograms a day. What you have to understand the conversion, the milligram is a thousandth part of a gram, a microgram is a thousandth part of a milligram and a nanogram is a thousandth part of a microgram. That means it is 10 to the power of minus 9 grams per day. Let us see the importance of analytical methods to determine such a low levels of impurities. Sensitive analytical methods with quantitation limits in the parts per billion range is required to meet the very low acceptable intake quantities, preferably below 0.02 ppm to 0.03 ppm depending upon the acceptable intake values. The analytical methods have to be sensitive enough to establish very low levels of LOQ of 0.02 ppm to 0.03 ppm range. For good understanding of this LOD concept, signal to noise ratio should be understood well. This signal to noise ratio determines the influence of noise levels on the relative deviation of measurement. 
LOQ is generally calculated as three times the LOD as a thumb rule. The methods have to be validated with a life cycle approach. Analytical method validations must be carried out with a life cycle approach. That means the method should be reviewed and evaluated whenever there are changes in the specifications and confirm that the method is in a validated state throughout the life cycle of the product. It should be understood that the analytical method validation is not a one-time activity and it is a rolling plan of action. The purpose of applying life cycle principles is to align the analytical method variability with the requirements of the product and to improve the reliability of the analytical method. ICH Q2 R1 and USB 1225 are the best suited for validation of analytical methods. The recommendations for API manufacturers are as follows. Perform a risk assessment and conduct confirmatory test using sensitive validated analytical methods if there are identified nitroamine impurities. So it is necessary that a detailed risk assessment be carried out and if there is any evidence of presence of nitrosoamines, it is necessary to do a confirmatory test using a sensitive analytical method. Mitigation plan and control strategy to optimize the process conditions avoid usage of nitrosoamine generating solvents, bases, reagents, catalysts to the extent possible. The mitigation plan may include control of process parameters to avoid formation of nitrosoamine impurities, usage of alternative solvents that may not generate nitrosoamine impurities. If there is no evidence of any presence of nitrosoamine impurities, there is no action further required. If the confirmatory test is negative, then there is no need to take any further action. So all this information has to be documented fully for review. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.